Formula One may yet welcome a new team in a couple of years, with the first hints that Michael Andretti's efforts for a 2024 entry might not be in vain. Since the powerhouse Andretti racing family failed to buy the Sauber organisation last year, it has set its sights on starting a new team from scratch and submitted paperwork to the FIA earlier this year expressing its interest. F1 owner Liberty Media seems to have opened the door to a new entry and Andretti himself conducted some opportunistic paddock canvassing while F1 was on American soil in Miami last week. Now there are some hints that Andretti might have a chance of getting on the grid and it's been working on the project while waiting for an answer. F1 has comprised 10 teams since Mana dropped off the grid ahead of the 2017 season. There have been multiple public declarations of interest from prospective entrants in recent years though, as Liberty Media's overhaul of the championship has made it increasingly appealing. The most substantial expression of interest came from XF1 driver and IndyCar champion Michael Andretti, who runs a multidiscipline race team under the famous family name. Governing body the FIA has so far failed to officially respond to Andretti's inquiry from February, while various teams have made it clear they would prefer the grid stays at 10 entries to protect their revenue and the health of the championship. In fact, the FIA even went as far as to say it was not in a position to consider new entrants at this time. But that was three months ago, and speaking in Miami last week ahead of the inaugural Grand Prix in the city, Liberty top dog Greg Maffe opened the door to a grid increase in the future. The president of Liberty Media said that there is potential that F1 will increase its number of teams over time, but he indicated it isn't a pressing concern. Presumably referring to the likes of Andretti, Maffe said that a lot of people would like Liberty to take that step, but he reiterated that so far, they have felt no need to. Weirdly, Maffe indicated that logistical issues were a stumbling block as there are places that don't have more than 10 garages. But the reality is that financial considerations are at the heart of the objection. Andretti is willing to pay a $200 million anti-dilution fee that would be shared between the existing 10 teams to help temporarily cover what they would lose by another team taking a slice of F1's prize money. But F1, the FAA and most teams are basically saying that this alone is not enough. After the COVID-19 pandemic threatened the survival of multiple teams and put a huge dent in F1's own finances, nobody really wants to risk unsettling the stability that has been worked hard for in recent years. Liberty negotiated a new Concord agreement in 2020 that revised the way commercial revenue is awarded to the teams, addressing the biased payments that some teams received and upping the income the smallest teams had. Maffei said that even F1's backmarker teams are now worth at least $400 million and said talk of billion dollar team valuations has attracted investment and interest. While this would seem to be an argument for opening up the grid, as high quality prospective entries are presumably among the interested parties, F1 still wants to shore up its existing 10 teams. That's why it keeps referring to them as franchises, keeping the championship a closed shop and encouraging any interested parties to invest in existing teams which just bumps up the quality and security of the entire grid. But Andretti hasn't lost hope, and there's a lot more to say on this subject. But before we get on to that, we want to invite you to let us know if you think Andretti should get into Formula 1. Leave a comment down below, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. All of that really helps us out, and we'll reward you by making more videos that we hope you'll like in the future. Michael Andretti wants his F1 team to be called Andretti Global, be based out of the United States and use Renault engines. He's so committed to this project and apparently so confident he will eventually succeed in breaking down the door that work has already begun to piece it all together. That includes preparing to break ground on a new headquarters later this year and having what sounds like a guaranteed deal with Renault for a power unit supply. All of this despite no significant progress being made since he submitted that paperwork to the FIA in February, outlining his intent and stating the case for the entry. Andretti was a busy man in Miami last week, making full use of F1 being on American soil. He had a short chat with FIA President Mohamed Ben Sulaim, which Andretti claims was positive and further boosted his hopes he will get his entry in the end. So far there are no official signs of that. The FIA has effectively reiterated its position from earlier this year that it's not currently in a position to respond to Andretti's initial correspondence or consider its approach, let alone commit to opening up the entry process. Andretti also lacks backing among the current teams, with the exception of McLaren, which is run by his friend and business partner Zach Brown, and of course Alpine, the Renault works team. 
In fact, in Miami, Andretti was seen canvassing various team principals in the paddock, trying to gauge their level of support and apparently trying to get all of them to sign a document backing his bid. Unsurprisingly, McLaren and Alpine were the first two teams to sign. Alpine CEO Lauren Rossi, who is ultimately in charge of all of Renault's Works F1 program, barely concealed his company's support of the Andretti proposal over the Miami weekend. He said his gut feeling was that the Andretti entry would add something to F1, although his official position is to let the matter go through the formal process. At McLaren, Zach Brown has been the most vocal supporter of Andretti so far. Speaking in Miami, Brown reiterated that McLaren remains supportive of an 11th high-quality team and he believes that's exactly what Andretti would be. Michael Andretti himself is an IndyCar champion and ex-F1 driver, while his father Mario was the 1978 Formula 1 world champion. Andretti Autosport is a successful organisation competing in a range of series, most notably in IndyCar. This bid has lent heavily on that family history and its US racing pedigree from the beginning, but it is also said to have significant financial backing, and Brown reckons it ticks the boxes of being a credible racing team with the right resources. He also said that other teams were simply acting selfishly, even though he understands why F1's history with vulnerable underfunded teams may provoke caution. But at the moment there are still several of those supposedly selfish teams that are willing to stand in Andretti's way if they can. If this situation comes down to Andretti needing the support of all 10 existing teams, he will find that an uphill task. We mentioned earlier that the Concord Agreement, which sets out the commercial terms the teams operate under, has a provision for an anti-dilution fund. This is the $200 million required to be paid by any new entry and would be spread across the current 10 teams. It exists to effectively offer some insurance against the teams having to share the same pot of F1 revenue with an extra entry. But as this one-off fee only provides short-term protection, F1 stakeholders all seem to agree that any new entry would need to do more than just pay this to be let in. Basically, someone like Andretti needs to make a compelling case that they would add further value and boost revenue long-term. Mercedes boss Toto Wolff is the most high-profile person to say publicly that Andretti has not yet done this. His argument is that the existing F1 organisations have invested more than a billion dollars over the years, so they should not be expected to risk diluting their revenue unless they have been completely convinced. And if you want proof of just how hard it will be for Andretti to find allies here, look no further than Red Bull team boss Christian Horner agreeing with his arch nemesis Wolf. Though Horner supports the Andretti bid in principle, he too believes that there needs to be protection for the existing teams. His idea is slightly different. He suggests that if Liberty decides to expand the grid, then F1 should reduce its share of revenues to compensate. He said that it would be unfair to ask the current teams to dilute their income for a decision that ultimately comes down to F1 and the FIA, so he believes this is a matter of Liberty deciding whether it is willing to adjust its business model. It's not just F1's biggest teams that have this position. The likes of Alfa Romeo and Haas have made it clear they don't see any need for an extra team to be added to the grid. So the message from Andretti's would-be rivals is clear. Anyone wanting to join the party needs to find a way to get into bed with an existing team. The door is open for Andretti, if only by a crack. Perhaps F1 and the FIA can be convinced to go beyond 10 teams after all, but it's going to take a lot more time for Andretti to have a chance of winning this fight. <laughs>